All right, how's everybody doing today? Back again with another video for you guys and gals. And today, I just want to go through the camera interface on the LG V30 and then provide you guys with some photo samples and some video samples just so y'all can get an idea of the overall performance of the cameras on the LG V30. So starting off, the first thing we got to do is go through the camera interface. But before we get to that, I just wanted to go over the different ways that you can launch into the camera on the LG V30. So way number one and probably the most straightforward way here is you can double tap when your display is off, you can double tap on the screen and then you swipe from the bottom right hand corner upwards on the camera icon to directly launch you into the main camera interface. Way number two is with your device, your display off yet again, all right, you just want to quickly double press the power down button and that will launch you directly into the main camera interface yet again. And then lastly, and probably the easiest way to do it, is with the camera icon located on any one of your home screens here on the device. You just tap on it and then tap on the camera icon, and it launches you straight into the main camera interface. Now, we got a few things that we can go over in the main camera interface here. So, right across the top, from left to right, we have a little bit of a different layout here. Typically, we have the settings gear icon in the top right, but LG has decided that they want to put it in the top left. So from left to right, we have the setting, the main settings, which if you tap on that, it will take you into the sub menu to where you can change a few things. Then right next to that, we have the modes. Then right next to that, we have our filters. And then we have our camera switch uh, quick shortcut here. So let's do it this way. So if I tap on the gear here, you can see this takes us into our main settings page here where we can change a few things. So they have a brightness mode. So when the camera detects that there's not enough light on the scene, it will brighten up everything. Then we have HDR controls. So if I tap here, you can see we can turn it on, we can turn it off, or we can leave it on auto. Now, I've been using it on the on mode. Typically, I like to leave it on auto, but, you know, I'm trying out new things. So I've been using it with it set to on, okay? Then if we go further down, we got uh, steady recording. So this reduces blur when you're recording video. Now, this only works in 1080p and under. Then we have our um, audio shutter button phrase. So if I turn this on, I could say any one of these quick phrases to snap a photo. Okay. Then below that, if I turn on this, this turns on the camera roll. So if I back up here, you can see the camera roll is now across the top. So if I quickly take a photo or a video, you can see I can now I now have access to that right across the top of the screen here alright so that's really sweet there let's jump back in to the settings here then if we move further down we got our ob object tracking and this again only works in 1080p and below so if you tap on something as a focal point the camera will try to keep that in focus and track it as it moves throughout the scene we have a QR scanner, our barcode scanner. We have our lens clean detection. So if it detects the lens is dirty, it will let you know that you have to clean that. Or if it detects that the lens is covered, it will let you know that you need to uncover the lens. Then we have our location tags. Or y'all already know I'm not a big fan of location tags because that adds the metadata with your location in it. So I typically turn it off. Then we have our grid line controls, all right? So this allows you to cut up the scene into thirds here. So you can see, I generally keep this on all the time. So that's why you can see the thirds is all cut up. But if you turn it off, then you won't have that. So you can see, now I turned it off, we won't have those grid lines. But I like having the grid lines because it assists me in lining up the best possible shot. Then right below that, 
you can add a signature line here. So for me, I just put shot on LG. This way, everybody knows uh, what camera I use to snap said photo. And then you have your storage location. Now, because this is a heavily customized Android device, out of the box, when you put your SD card in um, and you launch the camera, it will say, hey, an SD card was detected. Do you want us to save your photos and videos there? Now, I turned that on as soon as I launched the camera, but you do have the ability to either save it to the internal storage or save it to an SD card, all right? Now, that's strictly for your photos and your videos. Then you have a quick help settings here, and then right below, you have a few more controls. So this allows you to go full vision, so you get rid of your black bars here. So if I back out, you can see we got the full vision layout here with no black bars. Now if I turn that off, you guys and gals can see that now we have the black bars and we have our camera roll across the top. Okay jump back in scroll back down now right next to that we have our resolutions for the main 16 megapixel camera sensor now this is strictly dealing with photos so you can see if you want to take advantage of all 16 megapixels we're again stuck in shooting in the 4 by 3 aspect ratio which means depending on the orientation that we take the uh, photo or video we will have those black letter boxes and we could bump it all the way down to 3.4 megapixels in the 1 by 1 aspect ratio. And we can also shoot photos in the 18 by 9 aspect ratio. But that means that we are bumping the megapixel count down to 11 megapixels, so on and so forth. If you want to shoot in the traditional 16 by 9 aspect ratio, then we're stuck using... 12 megapixels as opposed to the full 16. So you got a bunch of different uh, photo resolutions to choose from. I suggest y'all try them all out and you pick the best one that works for you. But for the interest of this video and throughout the, my review process, I want to use the full resolution. So I just left everything on 16 megapixels in the 4 by 3 aspect ratio. All right, then next to that, we have our video resolution modes here. Now, this is where you can verify that you can shoot in 720p in 30 frames per second in the 16 by 9. Also in the 18 by 9, you can shoot in 1080p in 30 frames per second in the 16 by 9 and the 18 by 9. And you can also do 1080p 60 in the 16 by 9 as well. Really good stuff, and you could do 4K or 2K at 30 frames per second. So, out of the box in auto mode, those are your shooting resolutions. All right, now you do also have timer controls here, so we could do 10 seconds, we could do three seconds, or we could turn it off. All right, so that's the main settings for your camera interface. Now, if we keep going here, the next one over is your modes. So if I tap here, you can see all the modes that you could take advantage of on your LG V30. And there are quite a lot. So we have manual video mode. And this lets you change everything. Everything, everything. And it also gives you um, <clears throat> audio controls for the onboard microphones, as well as if you connect a... Uh, external microphone you could then control those audio settings for that external microphone as well and one little neat thing is if you tap the gear icon in pro mode you get a whole different set of settings so you can see we have frame rate settings so we can go all the way up to 60 frames per second all right we also have bit rate settings so the quality of your video so we have low, medium, and high, okay? We also have uh, hi-fi audio. So the highest uh, quality audio that you can get, you can record with your V30. We have Cinelog recording. So this records a flat image or a flat video that is ideal for editing after the video is done. 
So if you turn on Cinelog, you can record the video and then you can go back in with the flat video and do color correction and color editing and all types of video editing after the fact. Now, I don't really like do that too much, so I leave that turned off. Then again, we have the brightness mode, which which doesn't work if you record in the um, 4K. So there's none of that there. And then if we go down, we again have steady recording. So this reduces blur. Now we don't have camera roll here. Not for pro mode. We still have tracking focus. All right. And all the other stuff. And now if you go down to the bottom here and you click on your recording resolutions, we do get a few more recording resolutions here. So the main addition that I like here is that we can now record video in the 21 by 9 aspect ratio at 30 frames per second. And I've been playing around with this and I actually like this one. Now I haven't figured out the best way to frame up a really good video yet. That's how come y'all probably won't see any samples for the 21 by 9. Okay. And if you do, I'll be sure to call it out. But still playing around with that. But I really like the 18 by 9 and the uh, 16 by 9. And you can see that's a really neat addition there. Okay. So that's really, really nice. And that's the additional uh, settings when you go into pro mode for video. So going back to your modes here, we have Cine Video. Okay. And what Cine Video does is if you look at the screen here. This lets you add special effects, and it also lets you use point zoom. So with point zoom, you can pick a point on the video, and you can have the cameras slowly zoom into that point. Okay? So that's what the center video does, and that's what the point zoom is. Then we have the slow motion, which can be recorded at 120 frames per second and 240 frames per second, slow motion. All right, then we got the manual controls for photos. And the neat thing about the manual controls for photos is you then have your graphy. And what this does is it, it gives you a nice little gradient outline for things that are in focus and it will turn green. Now, it's a little bit wonky because of the one that I chose, but you play around with this and you could tap on certain things and it will tell you and you have a nice little gradient green outline letting you know when things are in focus. Okay, Now that only works for the primary 16 megapixel sensor. It doesn't work for the ultra wide sensor. So there is that. So moving on throughout the modes here, we got pop out mode, which is self explanatory. We got food mode, we got panorama mode. We got Snap Video, which is also self-explanatory. And what Snap Video does is it lets you record a portion of the video with the front-facing camera and a portion of the video with the rear-facing camera. Now, it's not as long as I like, so I tend not to use it too much. So you can see here, you can do three seconds up to a minute. So that's not enough video for me. I need something akin to what the S8 does. So, you know, the S8, if you pick the right resolution, you can get 10 minutes of recording with the front and the rear facing cameras simultaneously. So this was nice, but I really needed more. So I tended not to use this. Okay. But it's there if you want to play around with it. Then we have time lapse. We have 360 degree panorama, which again is self-explanatory. And it will guide you through how you do this here. Now, this is strictly for photos. This is not like the S8, which also lets you do a nice little GIF video for it. But you can do that with your V30. Just wanted to point that out. Then we have Snapshot, okay, which lets you line up the shot and then preview it so you can line up another shot. So that's really nice. Then we also have Match Shot. So match, what Match Shot does is it lets you take two photos, and once you got the photo that you like, you can then um, use that photo that you like to line up a, another photo. So really good stuff there. 
All right. Then moving on. Now, I know this video getting quite lengthy. We got Guide Shot, which is similar to Match Shot, but you could snap up to four different photos and have them all four in one big photo. So that's real nice. Okay. There's really a bunch of things to play around with here. And trust me, you won't get bored for a long time if you pick up the LG V30. Then we have Guide Shot. All right. So depending on the shot that you're trying to take, this mode will help you out. Okay. So you could do a bunch of different things here. And they have a bunch of different presets. Or you can use a photo that you've already taken as a guide for another photo that you want to take. So really good stuff there. And then we have a flash jump cut. All right. Now, I haven't really played around with this one. But this one is to make GIF videos. Okay. So you can make your GIFs using this mode here. All right. Not a big fan of making GIFs. And that pretty much goes over all the modes that you can do with the rear facing camera on the LG V30. Then next to the modes button here, we have our filters. So you have your standard array of filters here, which adds some nice little color effects. All right. So you play around with that. You find the filter that you like the best. Then right next to that, we have the camera switch icon here. All right. You can also switch the camera by swiping up on the screen. So I swipe up, take us to the front, swipe up again, take us back to the rear. So quick little way that you can switch the cameras there. All right. So that pretty much goes over all of your main modes and all of your main settings here. Now, if you go further down, just below the viewfinder, we have Q lens. And this will try to identify things that the camera sees and give you relevant search results, kind of like Google Lens. And then we have the AI cam. And if you turn on the AI cam, the camera will scan the scene and then try to best uh, give you the best uh, mode to take the best photo and or video. So that's what AI cam does. And you can change that through these modes here. So you can leave it on auto or you can change it after the fact. Now that one looks good. So a bunch of different things you can do with this camera here. All right. And that pretty much goes over the main settings for the rear facing camera. And one last thing that I forgot to point out here is you can also switch between your primary camera, which is what those true little trees are. So the one tree is your primary 16 megapixel sensor and the three trees is your ultra wide sensor and you could tap between them. All right. So you can see we're at ultra wide now and now we're at regular or you can zoom in and out and switch between them here. So again, we're at ultra wide now. This is the maximum. Uh, um, what am I looking for? Zoom resolution for the ultra wide. And then as we go further, it will switch you to the primary sensor. And that's the maximum zoom for the primary sensor. So that's how that works. Now you can also do the same with the shutter key here. So you can see if I drag the shutter key, it will switch between the wide and the primary sensor. So really, really nice. A few neat ways that you can take advantage of the zooming. All right. Now, you but, but right next to the shutter key for photos, you have the recording key for videos. So you tap on this and it will automatically start taking a video. Now, one thing I don't like about LG's camera interface is like, let's say I set up a shot, right? And then I go to record the video. Well, as soon as I hit record, it will reset everything that I just set up. So setting up a shot only really works for photos. It doesn't work for video. So I kind of don't like that because it kind of throws a portion of my hard work out the window and I don't appreciate that but that is what it is it's kind of what LG devices do then right next to that we have our quick shortcut to our gallery and then if you hit this arrow here we have our quick shortcut to share across the social media platforms or you know relevant contacts if you get that three dot menu there got your relevant relevant contacts Bluetooth NFC 
Android Beam, all that good stuff. So, that's pretty much the general overview of the main camera interface. Now, if we switch to the front facing camera, you guys and gals will see that it's pretty much very similar. Let me turn off this filter here. It's very similar, but we do have some differences. Now, with the front facing camera, if we jump into the settings here, you guys and gals can see we have some gesture shots here. So if you turn on gesture shots, what you do is if you hold your palm up to the camera and make a fist, then depending on how long you hold your fist for, that's how many shots the camera will take after you put your fist down. Then we have our voice shutter controls, camera roll, all the main stuff from the primary sensor is there. But if we go down to the uh, photo resolution, you can see the front facing camera maxes out at 5 megapixels in the 4x3 aspect ratio. If you want to shoot in the 16x9, then you're stuck using uh, 3.7 megapixels. Or if you want to shoot in the 18x9, then you're stuck shooting, shooting with 3.3 megapixels. Okay? So there is a noticeable difference in the cameras between the front and the rear. And you don't have as many setting controls with the front facing camera as you do with the rear. So you don't have any uh, pro motion for video, uh, pro mode for video with the front facing camera. Okay? You do have it uh, for photos, but not for video. So I was a little bummed out to see that. And for the front facing camera, your maximum recording resolution is 1080p at 30 frames per second, as you can see here. Okay? Other than that, the main difference between the front and the rear is that you only get access to your portrait mode recording using the front facing camera. So if y'all notice, y'all didn't see any portrait mode settings with the rear facing cameras. That's because you only get that with the front facing camera as well as you only get your beauty mode controls with the front facing camera as well. Now, another thing that I want to point out is that this flash with the front facing camera here only really it lights up the screen or it use the screen as flash so y'all can get a bright selfie and the front facing 5 megapixel camera on the LG V30 is a wide angle lens okay so that's why you can see we can switch between the group selfie or group video and the regular selfie here that's because the main uh, front facing sensor is a wide angle sensor. Now I couldn't find the, the uh, field of view for the front facing sensor even though I did find it for the rear. Okay? Now, moving on, that's the main differences between the front and rear facing cameras and that's all of the different modes for your front and your rear facing cameras. Okay? So, this pretty much covers the camera walkthrough portion for the LG V30. Now I'm going to go ahead and we're going to cut in some photo samples and then we're going to cut in some video samples as well. I hope you guys and gals enjoyed the rest of this video and I'll catch you guys and gals in the next video. Have a good one everybody. Peace.
All right, how's everybody doing today? Back again with another video for you guys and gals. And today, what I have for everyone is I'm back again with another set of camera tests for you guys and gals. Now that we've wrapped up the coverage on the Moto E4 Plus and the Xiaomi Mi A2 Lite, I can officially begin my coverage on the LG V30. So this one right here is the first set of camera tests with the V30. So we're gonna run through the usual testing. We're gonna do some pens. We're gonna do some zoom testing. We're gonna do some focus testing, <clears throat> so on and so forth. And then we'll wrap the video up and test out the front facing cameras. So the first set of tests here with the rear facing cameras, are being done with the 16 megapixel primary sensor which has OIS and EIS and phase detection autofocus and has a 7, 71 degree uh, wide field of view. So the primary sensor it records in 71 degrees. Now when I switch over to the ultra wide sensor here this bad boy is a 13 megapixel sensor with no autofocus and this bad boy is 120 degrees so this bad boy has a 120 degree field of view all right now the both the 16 megapixel primary and the 13 megapixel primary can record in up to 4k at 30 frames per second they can do 1080p uh, 60, 1080p 30, and they can also do it at uh, in the 18 by 9 aspect ratio and the 16 by 9 aspect ratio, and they can also do it in the 21 by 9 aspect ratio as well. But to take advantage of the 21 by 9 aspect ratio, you have to shoot in pro mode. Okay, other than that, if you're just shooting with everything on auto, then you can only do 18 by 9 and 16 by 9, and you could do um, 720p at 120 frames per second and 720p at 240 frames per second. All right, so there is that. Anyway, I believe that was three pans. So now let's do some exposure testing here. So I'm gonna pan down to the ground, right? And we're gonna pan up and out to the tree in the distance. And we're actually gonna do this one six times because we're gonna test the wide angle lens and then we're gonna test the primary lens. So here you go. So we're panning down to the ground now. And as always, what we're looking for here is a nice smooth transition from the lighter areas to the darker areas and the darker areas to the lighter areas. So y'all know how that goes. So now we're panned down to the ground here and we're just gonna pan up and out to the tree in the distance. All right, and y'all let me know what you think of that transition. That actually looks pretty smooth. So that was one and there's two and here's three. That actually looks pretty smooth. Now let's go back to the primary lens here and let's do the test one more time. So once again, it actually transitions very nicely and there's blowout because it's very shady, but it saves itself rather quickly and it recovers nicely. That's two and that's three. Now let's check the focus. Now there's a few things you can do with the focus on the cameras here. There is continuous autofocus, which you could turn on or turn off. So it's up to you. So you can let the camera do it or you can choose to do it yourself. Right now, because I wanna check the speed of the camera myself, I have it turned off. So I actually have to tap to focus here, but everything else is set to auto mode. All right, so now we're just gonna pick some focus points here. I like that tree on the other side of the driveway like that pillar right there and I like that big tree over there and so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna cycle through them and I'm gonna tap gonna let you guys know when the camera reports a lock 
So here we go, let's start over here. So now we're focused on the tree and we're good. So now we're gonna come over here, focus on the pillar here. All right, and we're good. Now we're gonna focus on this tree over here and we're good. And the neat thing is that it has tracking focus, which I did turn on before I start the video. So as I move, you can see it's gonna stay locked on to whatever I tapped on. So now it's trying to lock on, keep focus on the tree on the other side of the driveway there. So that's nice. And if I come over here and I tap on this one, it's gonna again lock focus and try to keep focus as long as it detects that that tree is in the frame, it's gonna try and keep that focus. So that's real nice. Now you could turn that off and on in the cameras as well, but I figured since this was the first test, I just want to turn on everything and see how it does. Now we're back to the pillar here and it's doing the same thing. So I tap on the pillar and it tries to keep focus on the pillar here. All right, so really good stuff. Overall, I have to say the focus with the cameras is really, really fast and really, really accurate. So with these particular cameras here, you get a square uh, focusing indicator. And you know it's focused because the there will be some um, like pinched box, like a pinched box around your focusing square, and then that means that it's in focus. Now, another thing is that when you're doing photos, you can do the focus peaking. So you'll get a green outline of everything that's in focus, and that's how you know that everything is focused up the way you want it. So that's really nice. Now, you can only take advantage of that in pro mode, but I just wanted to point that out here. But everything else that we do in regards to the video will be done in auto mode unless I say otherwise. So overall, the focusing is nice. So now let's wrap up the test and let's check the zoom here. And once again, I'm not testing the wide angle focus because it doesn't have any. It's a locked focus. All right. But as we check the zoom here, I want to zoom all the way out. So now we're at the wide angle lens. And as you pinch in, it changes between the cameras here. As you can see, I don't know how well y'all recognize that, but see, this is the end of the wide camera and this is the beginning of the regular camera. And as I zoom in and out, it does a nice smooth transition. That's barely noticeable. So again, let's focus on this tree. All right. And we're gonna zoom all the way in. So this is the end of the wide angle. Now we're on the primary, all right? And now we're halfway through on the primary lens. So I believe this is four times zoom here, okay? And honestly, I don't recommend y'all go up past two times zoom, but you can see that the main camera here actually maintains the colors and everything extremely nicely. So we don't have too much blowout here. And those colors are looking great. And if I pan down to the ground here, you can see you can see we still got lots of detail. But now, as you go into the um, max zoom, so now we're at the, the max zoom here. I believe this is ten time, uh, not ten, eight times digital zoom here. You can see now that we're in the max. The detail on the image is extremely uh, non-existent and the colors have washed out considerably and it, the picture itself is very, very blown out, okay? And if I pick something closer here, you can see we regained some of the detail but the colors are still very washed out. And because I'm at the max uh, focal length for the cameras, Y'all can see the image overall is extremely shaky, okay? And this is a 720p video <clears throat> in the 18 by 9 aspect ratio. And I do have that feature turned on, that steady shot feature. So that means that the stabilization should be turned on. But you can see as we zoom back out, then the image gets 
much more detail and the stabilization is restored and i gotta say um i've been using this phone as a secondary phone for the last week while i wrapped up my other coverage and i gotta tell you the cameras on this phone are great the stabilization on this phone are great but <laughs> so i guess i could tell i really like the, the phone ca the cameras on this phone but yeah this does it for uh camera test number one now let's spin the cameras around and we'll test out the front facing all right y'all now we are back in with the front facing camera on the lg v30 this is the front facing 5 megapixel sensor on the lg v30 and this is being recorded in 720p as well also in the 18 by 9 aspect ratio at 30 frames per second now um something that makes me very sad in regards to the differences between the uh, rear cameras and the front facing camera is that the front facing camera can only record in uh, 720p, 1080p 30, and uh, 1080p 60 I think it was. I think it was 720p uh, in the 18x9, 1080p, and 1080p 60. Now if I made a mistake I'll correct it in post, but there is no 2K or 4K with the front facing 5 megapixel sensor. So uh, 1080p is all you're going to get with this one. And there is no slow motion with this one as well. But similar to the rear facing cameras, the front megapixel sensor is a wide angle sensor. So what that does is that gives LG the ability to start with a wide frame and crop down to a more standard uh, size. Now I couldn't find the field of view for the front facing sensor so I'm not exactly sure how wide it is but I did verify that it is a wide angle sensor so right now we're in the wide angle mode and you can see if I tap down now we're in the standard mode so now I gotta hold my arm out a little bit more so that's really really nice so now I can decide maybe if I was uh, making a video by myself and some friends wanted to get in and you know, instead of having everybody huddle up, you can just tap out, and now everybody should easily be able to fit in the frame. So that's really, really nice, and it makes it really easy for uh, group selfies as well as group videos. So that's nice. I really enjoy that. Now, I am sad that you can't record at the same resolutions as you can with the rear, but it is what it is. Now, it probably would have been cool if they outfitted the front-facing cameras with the same set of cameras as the rear. Now, that would have really made this phone a beast in regards to all levels of the camera performance. But I have to say, um, comparing this footage side-by-side uh, -side with, with my G6 or the G6 that I've owned, the LG G6, their front-facing camera performance has gotten much better much better indeed all right so i can really appreciate that now also going back to some more negatives that i noticed with the front facing camera here is that well that was a positive this is a negative another negative thing that i don't like about the front facing camera is that you lose the ability to shoot in pro mode with the front facing camera so all the pro mode features you only get with the rear facing cameras. You don't get that with the front. Again, it would have been really cool for LG to outfit the front facing camera with the same capabilities as the rear facing camera because now if you want to take full advantage of the power of the rear facing cameras and do a vlog style video, then you have to become really adept at shooting vlog style video with the rear facing cameras. Now, that's not too hard to do with this phone, considering that the back of the phone is extremely shiny and slippery. So, if I wanted to do a uh, rear-facing uh, vlog-style video, it would be easy to do. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and demo that for you guys in a second here. Anyway, this was a real quick uh, front-facing camera test. Sorry once again if it went a little long. You know, we're trying to keep it with as much detail as possible. 
Anyways, let's switch to that uh, vlog style test with the rear facing cameras. So I'll be right back here. And now we're doing a vlog style video using the rear facing cameras on the LG V30. Now, it would have been easy to do this video if I would have took the case off the device, but my clumsy self, oh no, we keeping the case on. So I just had to use the uh, the flash as an indicator to where I am and uh, you know set the timer up, push record, and then flip the camera around. So you guys and gals, let me know what you think of this footage. Now I'm not entirely sure which cam I'm using right now. I think it's set up to start with the primary sensor. So there's that. Now I do believe I can set up the uh, the volume rockers to uh, zoom in and out, but I didn't do that before this video. So I'll let y'all know that portion when we do the camera walkthrough. But let me know what y'all think. How is this vlog style selfie footage compared to the footage on the front facing cameras? Once again, similar to the footage on the front facing cameras, I'm recording this footage at 720p in the 18 by 9 aspect ratio at 30 frames per second. So let me know what y'all think. All right, and now we are back in with the second set of video tests for the LG V30. This time we're sitting out by the pool here today, and now we're recording in 1080p in the 18 by 9 aspect ratio at 30 frames per second. So in particular with the rear facing cameras, again, let me reiterate, you could do 720p at 16 by 9 and 18 by 9. Um, you could do 1080p in 16 by 9 and 18 by 9. You could do 1080p 60 in 16 by 9. And you could do 4K or 2K at 30 frames per second in 16 by 9. That's all with the wide angle lens which is 120 degrees field of view or the primary lens which is a 71 field of view uh, primary sensor all right now one thing that i am very sad about is you can't record at those same resolutions with the front facing camera okay in particular with the front facing camera now i did make a mistake in my first set of videos you can only record um 720p uh, 30 FPS in 16 by 9 and 18 by 9 and uh, 1080p 30 FPS in 16 by 9 with the front facing 5 megapixel sensor so there's no 2k there's no 4k there's no slow motion no none of that with the front facing sensor so that does make me very sad but you do have all of those capabilities with the rear facing sensor all right so let's run through the standard set of tests now. I was giving y'all some nice stationary footage to begin with. Now we're gonna do some pans, we're gonna do some focus tests, we're gonna do some exposure tests, we're gonna do some zoom testing, and then we're gonna wrap it up. So without further ado, let's get into this test. Now starting off, we're gonna start with the primary sensor, and we're gonna switch from the primary to the wide angle wherever I see fit. So here we go, let's start with these pans. So I'm going to pan from here, right there, all the way through to right there and back. We're going to do this three times. So that's one, this is two. And this is three. Okay. Now let's go ahead and test the exposure. So let me focus down the pool deck here. And we're gonna pan up and out. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to bump the camera. We're gonna pan up and out to that tree in the distance there. And what we're looking for here is a nice smooth transition from one focus point to the other with minimal exposure blowout. So let's see how the primary sensor does. So now we're focused on the pool deck, panning up and out. 
That was really smooth. I like that. That was really smooth. Let's do this three times. Oh man, you can barely tell. That's nice. And I especially like how the V30 cameras are getting the color of the pool deck spot on. So it's not trying to shift it to one color over the other. It's exposing both colors perfectly. And that's almost an exact representation of what the real scene looks like. So that's nice. Now let's do the same test with the wide angle sensor. So let's go wide. All right. And let's do this one more time. Now, one thing that I was very sad to see as well is with the wide angle sensor, you have a fixed focus. So I don't have any type of focus controls with the wide angle sensor. So as such, when I'm trying to record videos with the wide angle, a lot of it is mostly out of focus. So I can already see, although it's a nice thing to have for pictures, and it would be nice to have for video, but the main fact that it's mostly always out of focus means that I'm probably going to be stuck using the primary sensor. All right? So really good stuff there. Even though it makes me sad, it's still a pretty good camera. And it's still exposing pretty much perfectly. Alright. So that's the wide angle sensor. Now let's check the focus. Let's switch back to the primary. And let's check the focus here. So I'm going to use that ball. I'm going to use this pot here. And I'm going to use that plant over there. And I'm just going to report when we get our lock. So here we go. Locked. Locked and locked. And what's really nice about these cameras is that when I'm in camera mode, once it gets a lock, I get a shutter button inside of the focus circle to instantly snap the picture. So I could use the regular shutter button or I could use the shutter button inside the focus square. Alright, but the lock is pretty fast. Let's go back to the ball. Boom. Go back to the pot. Boom. Now I didn't I do notice that it's a little bit slower, but I do believe that's because I have the focus tracking turned on. So like when I tap on the ball here, no matter how much moving I do, it's gonna try and keep that ball in focus. And it will do it until the camera detects that the ball is no longer in the scene. And when the ball comes back in the scene, it will again try to lock that focus. So I think that's what's slowing down the overall focus. I may turn that off in the last video. Now let's do the same thing with the pot here. And as I move around, it's going to do its best to keep the pot in focus and keep the exposure right. And it's doing a fairly good job. So good stuff with the focus. All right, now, lastly, Let's test the zoom here. Let's start out wide and gradually go in. So this is the maximum, uh, not the, ma the maximum distance you could go out. You can't zoom out any further than this. And I'm getting tongue tied a lot today. Now let's zoom in to two times zoom. All right, now this right here is the minimum the maximum zoom length on the wide angle sensor so if i zoom in some more we're going to switch to the primary sensor now so bam now we're on the primary sensor want to get once again in case you missed it wide angle sensor primary sensor it's real quick i like how they do it okay primary sensor wide angle sensor wide angle sensor primary sensor now let's take this up to two times zoom right there boom and that looks good that looks real good and this is where this is as far as I would recommend you zoom in with the primary sensor now the primary sensor does have OIS and EIS and phase detection autofocus so I do get a considerable amount of stabilization but even so as you zoom in the picture will still degrade and you can pick up on the little minor shakes that my hands do and i apologize because i do have some shaky hands 
but this is two times zoom and that still looks pretty good now let's go in some more All right, and now that's maximum zoom there. And y'all can see what happens at maximum zoom. Now you still maintain some color, but we've lost almost all the detail in the plants there. The, uh, it's become very muddy, very blown out, at least what I'm seeing through the viewfinder here. Now if I focus on something further out, like the mobile home there, that's a little bit, we, we retain some of that detail but even the text on the motorhome is hard to read. So once again, I don't recommend you zoom in to the max zoom on your smart devices. I would recommend that you keep it right here at two times zoom here, right there. And if you want to get any closer than that, just physically get as close to the subject as you need. All right. And once again, we can still also snap photos while in, while in video. So let's do some snaps here. And I'll keep I'll have these in the photo section before we do the video so y'all can see what we're doing here. Snap that, that looks good. And let's snap this over here. That looks good as well. Yeah, it looks real good. Alright, so that does it for the uh 1080p testing with the rear facing cameras on the LG V30. Once again, this video was recorded in 1080p at 30 frames per second in the 18 by 9 aspect ratio. Now you can still do um, 1080p 60 and 4K. Now I'm going to skip over 1080p 60 and we're just going to jump into recording uh, 4K. But before we do that, I want to give y'all some more samples with the front facing cameras. Okay? So now let's switch once again to the front facing cameras on the V30 and let's do those last set of tests then maybe tomorrow or Friday we're like a week and a half in with this device maybe tomorrow or Friday we'll go out to the big yard and we'll do the 4k samples but anyways just so y'all know what's coming next let's jump to the front facing camera and wrap up those tests so I'll be right back all right how's everybody doing now we're testing out the front facing 5 megapixel camera on the LG V30, okay? And this one is being done at the maximum resolution that you can do for the front facing camera. So this one is being recorded in 1080p at 30 FPS and we're recording this one in the 16 by 9 aspect ratio, all right? So let me know what y'all think. How do you think the camera is doing? with my skin tones, okay? How you think it's picking up the detail and all the imperfections in my skin? I do have bad skin, I do apologize. It is what it is, I have really bad acne as well. It is what it is. But how do you think the camera is doing? So starting off, this is a nice little stationary shot here. So now let's pick it up and let's move around a little bit. Okay? How do you think it's exposing for the background and all the surrounding colors? How's it keeping everything in focus? What do you think? How's the overall audio as well? Because I don't have any microphones connected up while I'm testing out these cameras. And if I do, I'll go ahead and let you guys know in the interest of full transparency. But right now for this test, we're using the onboard cameras and onboard microphones on the LG V30. So what do you think? Now this is in primary mode. Now the front facing camera on the LG V30 is a wide angle sensor so that means that I could do things like start primary here which is a nice cropped in image and then go wide if I want to. So if I tap this now we punched out a little bit and now it's a more wide shot here so I can kind of fit more in the frame. So let's see if I put it back down let's say I was doing a real quick update vlog or discussion video this is what it would look like with the wide angle sensor and I gotta tell you guys because um, this is one of the things that really got on my nerves with LG's devices was how bad the front facing camera was on the LG uh, G6 and I've been going back and looking at some of my older footage 
and comparing it to some of the footage that I'm taking with the V30 here, and there's a noticeable improvement with the front-facing cameras. And that's exactly what I would like to see, especially from device to device, especially the way that LG releases their devices. There needs to be noticeable improvements, and I'm very happy to see that. Now, one thing that I am sad about, and I've said this before, LG, at least where their camera software is concerned, they uh, practice something that I'm not very happy with. And that is, once you push record um, in the LG software, it messes up all your presets here. So let's say I wanted to record a video, and I had everything set up just the way I would like, and I go to push record, and it kind of messes it up. So I'll be sure to uh, put that into the video for you guys so you can see, and I'll make sure I don't edit that out. Now, the only reason why I don't like that practice is because, as I mentioned, it gives me more editing to do after the fact, okay? But for one of these upcoming videos, I'll make it so y'all can see that process and I won't edit it out. And that's one of the practices that I don't like about LG's camera software. Other than that, um, I said it before in my other camera samples, I wish LG would implement the same software with the front facing camera that you can do with the rear. Now I do know there are some hardware limitations with the front facing camera, so that just means I think LG should upgrade their front facing cameras. We should get the same quality cameras as we do on the rear of the device on the front of the device. Just, in, just so we could have that extra bit of versatility and then it wouldn't really matter which cameras we want to use on our device. Anyways, I don't really want to make this video too much longer than this. This, what again, was a front-facing camera sample out by the pool with the front-facing 5 megapixel camera on the LG V30. And this is in the maximum recording resolution that you can record with the front-facing sensor. Also, there is no external microphone hooked up, so let me know what y'all think of the overall audio quality and video quality down below. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin the cameras around again, and we're going to attempt to do a uh, vlog style video with the rear facing cameras. Now it's a little bit easier to do because of how reflective the V30 is, but I want y'all to really notice the difference in the front facing cameras compared to the rear facing cameras when I do this test. Then we're going to take the uh, V30 inside and we're going to do some minimal light tests. So we're going to do daylight in minimal light, so as low as I can get the light. Then I'm going to wait till nighttime and we're going to do some artificial light video tests. And then maybe uh, Thursday, maybe Friday, we'll go out to the big yard and do the last set of tests. So I'll be right back now. Let's do those other clips. All right. So now this is a vlog style video using the rear facing dual camera setup. Now, being as I spun the camera around, I don't really have any controls over what I can um, do with the rear facing cameras when I record like this. So it's pretty much whatever the camera picks up, that's what the camera does. And I do have to make another correction because I just noticed in my last set of video tests, before we did the shots out by the pool, I did tell you guys that you could remap the volume buttons. Unfortunately, um, I did not find that remapping capability in the software. So for as of right now, it can only be used to take photos while in video, uh, while in photo mode, or record a video while in video mode. I can't remap it to zoom or anything like that. So I had to make that correction here. But let me know what y'all think of this camera sample. Again, we're using the rear facing cameras to record this vlog style type of video. So that's some stationary footage for y'all. So now let me pick up the whole thing here and see how it does. So as I move around, how do you think the camera is doing or cameras are doing? Because we're using the rear facing camera setup here. 
How's it doing with my skin tones? How's it doing with the background? How's the focus doing? How's the stabilization doing? Let me know. All right, not gonna make this clip too much longer. Now let's go ahead and run inside and let's do some more tests. All right, right so here is a front facing camera test. And this is with the shades as closed as I can get them. Now, let me know what y'all think. Now I do know, just looking through the viewfinder here, the camera is having a tough time exposing for what's behind me because it's trying to pull in that extra light even though the shades are kind of cracked. So I'm trying to make it dark, but the camera is trying to adjust for the light that it sees back there. So I see it struggling, but I also can see that it's doing a slightly better job than the last camera that I tested in this same lighting scenario, which was the Moto E4 Plus. That footage was actually really dark until I started to move the cameras around. So this one's actually doing a better job. And I feel like if I angled up just a little bit more, it would look even better. Now it is blowing out the background a lot, but as I move around, that should get better. So just so y'all can see, the shades are closed. And the ones that I couldn't close, I did crack the best I can. So this is low light here. And you can see as I tilt and the camera realizes that there's more light in one part of the scene than in the other, it does adjust accordingly and it does do a good job. So I feel like when I tilt this way, it actually exposes and then I feel like my skin has the proper skin tone. But if I go back, this one actually makes it really dark, but that that's because this side of the room is as dark as I can get it. So what do y'all think? What do y'all think of the overall audio performance? What do you think of the overall video performance as well? Let me know. How do you think the focus is? How do you think the stabilization is? Because I just picked it up. We've been moving it around a little bit here. So what do you think of the overall stabilization? Let me know down below in the comments. All right. Let's spin the cameras around. All right. And now we're doing a rear-facing camera test in low light. And honestly... That this footage that I'm seeing through the viewfinder looks pretty good, pretty good indeed. Like, I would be okay doing a product review or some type of demo with this type of lighting. I feel like the camera is doing a great job. So, like, if I whipped out a phone here, let's see what I had on deck today. Got the S8 right there. I actually featured that one last time. What else I got here? Uh, yes, Pixel in the house. Got the Google Pixel right here. Let's use this one. So, like, let's say, oh, my, my package just shipped. So, yeah. Let's say, um, you know, the Google Pixel got a feature update, even though we know it's not, not going to. But for demonstration purposes, let's say I had a feature demo that I wanted to do for you guys. Or... I wanted to show you all my latest setup on my Android device, something like that. This lighting is actually perfect for that. So all I'd have to do is unlock my device, drop it on the stand here, boom. The, bright, the brightness needs to be adjusted a little bit, and that actually looks pretty good. Now I have to adjust the brightness on my device here to make that work. Yeah, that, that looks about right. And yeah, now we can do like a feature demo. I could focus in on the text, get that text as crisp as possible. And now I could do some type of feature demo or something like that. Now it is struggling to keep it in focus, but that's because I forgot to turn off the, uh, the object tracking. So it's as I, as the camera moves ever so slightly, it's going to try to keep everything in focus. Now, I should probably turn that off for the next video test, but this this looks pretty good. So, I could do some type of feature demo here, uh, things of that nature. The colors look accurate. There's enough sharpness in there for you to read the text. Yeah, it looks good. This will work. So, overall, I have to say, even with not the best light, the, uh, the LG V30 does a great job, and this is the pri primary... Uh, 70 degree, 71 uh, 
degree field of view sensor. And if I wanted to go wide, just so I could see what happens to the focus, this is what happens when I go wide. So sure, I get more in the scene, but you can see now that my main subject, all that text is kind of not in focus. Now the background text is in focus, like you can read the bigger Google Pixel text. But if I zoom in here, so let's say I want to zoom in to the maximum range on the wide angle sensor, all of that text is still out of focus. Like, look at that. So this is why I'd say it'd be much cooler if LG can incorporate focus into their wide angle lens. That would be that would be super cool because then I could get wide angle in focus videos. It would be awesome. But for now, guess we're stuck with that primary sensor. Boom, making it do what it do. So, just a real quick demo here, letting y'all see what the LG V30 cameras can do in low light daytime settings with the uh, front and rear facing cameras. Uh, regular uh, 70 degree lens and ultra wide 120 degree lens. Letting y'all know what that could do. All right, so now we're back in with another camera test for you guys and gals. Now, as I said, the sun has went down, so now we're doing the uh, camera test of the front facing 5 megapixel camera on the LG V30. This one is being done using artificial light, so we're just using the basic lights that I have out here in the main shooting area. This is similar to the same set of lights that I used on the Moto E4 Plus artificial light test. So yeah, y'all let me know what you think. Um, this actually doesn't look half bad. It's a little bit darkish, but you know, let me know what you think. All the audio for this video is being recorded using the onboard mics on the LG V30, alright? And this video is being recorded at the maximum resolution for the front facing cameras. That is 1080p at 30 frames per second for the 5 megapixel front facing camera on the LG V30. I just wanted to test out the rear facing cameras in the same low lighting, artificial lighting scenario. So now we're using the, I think it's set to use the primary 60 megapixel sensor, but I'm not sure. So I'll let you guys know and I'll throw up something in post. But this is being recorded in 1080p in the um, 18 by 9 aspect ratio, I believe, at 30 frames per second. And all the audio you guys and gals are seeing for this indoor low light artificial lighting test here is being recorded via the onboard microphone. So there is no external microphone hooked up here this evening. Anyways, let me know what y'all think. Alright, how's everybody doing today? Back in with the final set of camera tests for the LG V. 30. Alright, so we're outside today in the big yard and it's a beautifully sunny day and we're going to run through the regular camera test. So we're going to do some pans, we're going to do some focus tests, we're going to do some zoom testing and we're going to wrap it up. So because it's so sunny out today, we're not going to do any exposure testing because it's a little bit too bright for that. But Pretty much, if you checked out the rest of this video, you should get an idea of how the camera performs in the different scenarios. So, we can skip that one test for today. It should be alright. So, starting off, I've already been panning through. So, after this last pan, we're just going to do some focus tests and some zoom tests. And we're going to wrap it up. And this last video for you guys and gals is being recorded in 4K or 2K at 30 frames per second. So let me know what y'all think of the overall video quality and all the audio for this last test here is being recorded using the onboard microphones on the LG V30. So let me know what you think of the onboard microphone quality as well. Alright? 
So we just finished up the pans here. Now I just want to fit, pick a few focus points here. So let's use this tree in front of us. Good. And let's use the car trailer over there. Good. And I like, uh, let's see, let's use this chair right here. Good. Now I'm going to cycle between these and I'm going to just report when the camera says it has a lock. So starting off with the tree, bam, lock. That was fast. Back to the trailer over there, locked up. That was fast too. And over here at the chair, bam, locked. Good stuff. Good stuff indeed. Back to the tree. Locked up real fast. Almost faster than I can call. Trailer. Got a lock on it. Yep. And lastly, over to the tree. Man, we got a lock. Okay, so really fast focusing speeds on the LG V30. And I would expect nothing less with the laser autofocus. You're going to get some really fast focusing speeds with the cameras on the V30. Now let's just do some zoom testing here. So let's see. Let's see. Let's pick that trailer in the distance. So and let's go all the way out. So let's start with the wide angle. So we're going to go all the way out. Now this is the wide angle lens here. Okay. And you see how much you're able to get into the frame with the wide angle lens. Really crazy stuff. Now you don't have any um, type of focus controls when you use the wide angle lens because it's a fixed focus sensor. All right, but it is what it is. So now let's zoom in. Now we're at the edge of the wide angle sensor right here. This is as far as you can zoom in with the wide angle sensor. And if we keep going, now we're on the primary sensor. And let's keep going even more. So this is this is two times zoom on the primary sensor. Look at that. Still got lots of detail. The color is almost bang on accurate with the actual scene. Really good stuff. Two times zoom with the actual sensor here. And then let's go four times zoom right there that's that even that still looks good all right starting to blow out the color a little bit on the fringes now let's go all the way in now this is the max zoom on the LG V30 primary sensor and you can see like I barely moved and you see what happened there it that kind of looked like the camera got juggled up this is what happens when you zoom in all the way on your primary sensor now to a certain extent this just turns into digital cropping so you can see the colors are still there but most of the detail is kind of gone like look at the metal on the trailer it's kind of look like little silver blobs at least to me through the viewfinder look at the detail on the grass it almost looks like they tried to paint it on this is why i don't use the maximum uh zoom length on the smartphone cameras because this is what digital cropping does to the image. Now, the overall stabilization is still pretty good because this, the primary sensor does have OIS and EIS and phase detection autofocus. So that's why the focusing is fast. And that's why for the most part, the video is stable even though it's zoomed all the way in. But overall, I wouldn't recommend zooming all the way in with your smartphone cameras. I would recommend, and I, I say it in all of my camera tests, you want to back up to about two times zoom. So right about here, which is, that looks beautiful. And then you want to physically get as close to your subject as possible. That's what I would recommend you do. And that way you're going to maintain detail and maintain colors. And you should generally come out with a nice, pleasing image. All right. Really good stuff. Okay. So. Lastly, let's do, let's do one more zoom testing. You see, one more zoom test. You see that tree over the shed there? Let's zoom in on that. So let's focus up. All right. Now let's zoom in. Okay. And let's keep going. Boom. So you see what happens there? Just wanted to highlight that one more time. All right. Let's zoom out. And that about does it, y'all. So this brings... The overall camera coverage on the V30 
to a close, okay? Now, that doesn't mean that my uh, coverage on the V30 is over. This will be one of my primary recording devices moving forward on the channel. And you will see this bad boy in a few versus videos as well. So I'm going to have a lot of fun with this device. This just brings the overall camera coverage to a close. I hope everyone enjoyed the video. And I'll catch you guys and gals in the next one. Peace. Now I'm not going to do any front facing camera footage. Because I pretty much worn out the front facing camera footage on this device. Now I may just uh yeah. I'll spin the cameras around and I'll give y'all a vlog style video with the rear facing cameras in 4K. So let's do that now. Let me cut to the uh, cut to spinning the camera around. I'll be right back. Here is a rear facing camera test, a vlog style, discussion style camera test using the rear facing 13 and 16 megapixel sensors on the LG V. 30 and this video is being recorded in 4k at 30 frames per second or 2k at 30 frames per second however you want to call it so let me know what y'all think of the rear facing camera performance how's the audio because there is no external microphone hooked up here how's the camera doing with the light as we kind of the sun went away so we're kind of in the shade now Okay, but how's it doing with the overall detail representation? How's it doing with my skin tone? You know, now I don't have the best skin, but it is what it is. So let me know what y'all think. How's the overall stabilization doing? All right, that should about do it. I'll catch you guys and gals in the next video. Have a good one, everybody.